Good morning. And good to see all of you here this morning in the Lord's house. A beautiful day our Lord has given to us. Uh, much better than it was uh, Wednesday and Thursday this last week, but uh, and it sounds like it might get a little dicey tomorrow morning as well. So be careful out there as you uh, travel, if you are going anywhere. Uh, Nick, but hopefully by, we'll warm up and the week will be fine then this coming week. Uh, and then we'll be able to have our, uh, our first Lenten midweek service. So it'll be the second week already since we missed this. We had one service this last week on Ash Wednesday at 1030. But uh, for all intents and purposes, it was kind of like we missed Ash Wednesday because couldn't have that second service. But anyway, we're glad you're here with us this morning. Welcome to the Lord's house. Welcome to those who are watching on Facebook this morning as well. Or uh, whenever you're watching this service of worship, I'm Pastor Mark Wenzel, and this is Grace Lutheran Church in Amra, Wisconsin. Before we get going this morning, a few announcements. Again, of course, please fill out the welcome cards in your pews. It's greatly appreciated that you do that, both members and visitors alike. Um, just mentioned about our next Lenten service, midweek service, this Wednesday, 6.30 p.m., uh, and then ahead of that, the uh, uh, supper, Lenten supper, it's an Italian theme this week, so come for that, uh, 5.30 to, uh, to the time of service at 6.30. And we're in a sermon series called Chronicles of the King. And the sermon I'll be preaching on this Wednesday is on King Jehoshaphat uh, in the Old Testament. So maybe you have heard of him before? Come on, what's wrong? No, uh, but it, it, it's a very interesting series as we talk about in comparison to the one true king, the one perfect king, our Lord Jesus Christ. So please join us these several weeks of uh, midweek Lenten services. That also being said, I want to remind you of the Lenten devotional booklets. If you haven't picked yours up yet, uh, please do so uh, from Lutheran Hour Ministries. Obviously, they started in earnest uh, Ash Wednesday, and there's a devotion every single day. You can also go online, too, and listen to the devotions themselves at uh, lhm.org, uh, lutheranhourministries.org, and you can download the devotions there as well if you so desire. Uh, what else here? We have uh, preschool is accepting registrations uh, for enrollment at this time. So uh, please note that as well. Um, yesterday we had what was called a wide discovery process here. And Pastor Nathan Metter from our uh, South Wisconsin District uh, office, he's the mission executive of our district, he led us in that uh, kind of a workshop uh, from about 9 to 1230, so a few hours. A very good workshop indeed, and we came up uh, through that time with a folk, or I should say, a, a why statement of who we are as a congregation right now. And that was the goal yesterday, was identifying what are we right now in this time and this place. And uh, next week we'll share that statement with you, uh, and we'll have that in our service, and we're going to be saying that for the next several weeks to try to ingrain it in our, in our hearts and our minds. Uh, and again, that's just the first step of all of this as we kind of search God's will as where he wants to lead us and take us as we uh, continue the ministry here in this place. Um, and certainly because the Lord is in charge and he's brought us to this point in time, we know he's going to lead us always in the future. So uh, exciting stuff. If you want to talk to anyone who was part of that yesterday, please do so. Ask them about that. And uh, pretty, pretty neat stuff. So thanks, thanks to all who came to that workshop yesterday. Um, as you know, uh, our preschool director, uh, Brenda Keister, will be retiring at the end of this school year. Um, and, of course, we were kind of nervous about who, how are we, what's going to happen. You know, how, what are we going to do? Who's going to replace her or come, you know, continue it on? And the Lord was good. He's always good. But he certainly was good in providing that person in rather short order, which is a wonderful thing. And it's always a God thing when it comes to these types of things. You know, we can talk about plans and all that stuff, but God is the one in charge. And that's what's wonderful about this. And um, anyway, Miss, Mrs. Robin uh, Eckstein uh, is, uh, has accepted the position to be our new preschool teacher and administrator. Starting, she'll be starting in earnest July 1st, although I shouldn't say that. She's probably already starting already, just kind of getting the sorts, getting things uh, thought out and all that, and working with Brenda in that transition uh, eventually. Um, but she is here this morning just to briefly introduce herself and then you can kind of see, put a name to a, name to a face. Uh, it's mentioned in the newsletter for March, by the way, and those newsletters are out too today, so please pick yours up in the mailboxes or check your emails, March newsletter. But Robin, why don't you come up and uh, just say a few words as you introduce yourself to the members here uh, at Grace uh, in Amro. <coughs> Thank you. 
Ng. I'm Robin Eckstein, and I will be teaching and directing the program for the preschool. I'm really excited about it, and I really look forward to all the little people that we get to teach this year. So hopefully we have a full house for that. Yeah, yeah. So very good. Well, thank, thank you, Robin. And you can read more about her in the uh, newsletter, description of her background and whatnot. Um, but again, we're, we're thankful to the Lord for that and as we move ahead with that ministry and, uh, and uh, ask God's blessings on that. So anyway, uh, that's, I believe, all the announcements for today. Uh, again, get your newsletter on your way out of church this morning. The uh, other announcements that are in your bulletin. I encourage you to read as well. Our uh, order of service today will be divine service setting for without communion. Uh, we are... Uh, going to use this service once again today. Before we sing our opening hymn, which is hymn number 562, All Mankind Fell in Adam's Fall, we say once again for the last time for this month uh, our February memory verse. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. James 4 verse 17. We now sing our opening hymn. stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, our help is in the name of the Lord. 
If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, we pray. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority. I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. With long life, I will satisfy him. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. For he will command his angels concerning you. On their hands they will bear you up. You will tread on the lion and the adder. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. With long life I will satisfy him. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Let us pray. O Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading today for the first Sunday in Lent is from the third chapter of Genesis, verses 1 through 21. And in this reading, of course, is the account of the temptation of our first parents, Adam and Eve, by the devil, and uh, unfortunately, their failure to uh, win against that temptation and putting their trust in themselves rather in the Lord. In the Gospel reading, we see the opposite, of course, Jesus undergoing temptation and overcoming Satan's evil desires uh, by his perfect obedience and his, and his willingness to submit himself into the hands of his Father. But we learn from this, too, again, that that's the case. We learn, to learn, we learn about putting ourselves in, the, in God's hands in such times, in fighting temptation, and know that our Lord is with us. Uh, but indeed, seeing we are sinners needing forgiveness, which God does give to Adam and Eve here, as you'll see in this text. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, 
she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skins and clothed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm appointed for this day is Psalm 32, verses 1 through 7. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. The epistle is from the fifth chapter of Romans, verses 12 through 19. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. If, because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification in life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Our Gospel today is the text for the sermon this morning as well. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. 
And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, And behold, angels came and were ministering to him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated. Before we sing our sermon hymn, do we have any kids at this service today? I know we have quite a few at early service for children's message. I don't see any. Nope. Andy? (laughs) We're all children right now. (laughs) No. All right, well, we'll continue then with our sermon hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, number 657. Oh, wait, time out. Thank you. Got so excited there. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now you may be seated, and we sing our sermon hymn, 657, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto each of you this day from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God today for our devout consideration and meditation is the gospel reading from Matthew 4, verses 1 through 11. Jesus perfectly obeying his Father and undergoing every temptation that we face and winning those battles each and every time. Thanks be to God. This is our text for this day. And my dear brothers and sisters in our living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, as a fellow resident with you in this world, I know what it is like to have good days and bad days, or at least days that aren't very good. Indeed, some days we know start out well. We get up and everything seems to fall into place. There's no problems and you go on through the day and it's a smooth sail throughout. And then there's the other days where it starts off pretty rough. Maybe your alarm clock doesn't go off or you, fa- you forget to set it to go off at a certain time and you oversleep. Or you get out to your car with a cup of coffee and all of a sudden that spills all over the place on you and maybe in the car itself and now you've got to clean that up. Maybe it's something where you get a, a phone call saying your heating bill is due immediately or else. Your kids get sick and you've got to pick them up from school and you don't have time for that, you've got other things to take care of. Or maybe you receive another phone call that says you missed an important appointment. You know what I'm talking about. Those are the days that you would wish would end right away. And it sets the theme, unfortunately, for the, the day itself. Well, we are in the season of Lent now, of course, and the gospel today for our meditation on this first Sunday in Lent really does set the theme, the entire theme, for the season of Lent. And you see that the theme is clearly not about earthly glory for Jesus. It wasn't like Jesus was baptized in the Jordan and then is set forth for all this fame and and everybody loves him and he gets everything he ever wants. No, where does he go? The Spirit leads him out into the desert to be tempted by the devil. And it sets that theme because Jesus, in beginning this, this way, is actually already has his face set towards where he is ultimately going to go, which is Calvary, where he would suffer and die for the sins of the whole world. He is not going to be deterred in one bit, no matter how life goes for him, his earthly life. And we know that for Jesus, there were many ups and many, many downs. But he goes to that cross, as he goes to that cross, he must be tempted. I want you to not underestimate that word must. He had to. It wasn't an option. He had to undergo temptation by the devil. The Bible tells us that he was tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. You see, my friends, the temptations that come to our Lord are the very same types of temptations that come to you and me on a daily basis. You and I are in a constant battle. We cannot let our guard down. We are always under attack by our three enemies. The world, our own sinful flesh, and the devil himself. They all seek to get an audience with us to listen to them rather than to the voice or to the word of our Lord. So the question that goes before you this morning is, whose word will you take? Is it going to be the voice of the world, the devil, or our own flesh? Or is it going to be the voice of our Lord who always provides for our needs? There's three things we're going to learn this morning. And the first thing we learn is that the word that man hears, first of all, concerns how one receives God's word. When it comes to God's word, Satan says to us, doubt it. Doubt it. In verse 3 it says, The tempter came and said to Jesus, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. It goes without saying that Jesus was perhaps at his weakest points, physically speaking. And yet there was no doubt that Jesus, at any moment, at any time he wanted, could make himself, for himself, a lavish feast. He could have done this long before he spent 40 days and 40 nights had lapsed without eating. 
He could do that. Why? Because he was and he is God. And that's exactly the temptation that the devil wanted to get him to do, is to doubt that God was going to help him, to doubt the word. You are the son of God. You can do this. He wanted Jesus to use that power for his own purposes. Basically saying, Jesus, why not if you are the son of God and have all this power, who are you going to hurt if you just use it to feed yourself and make yourself feel better? With that opportunity that he had to do this, with knowing that he was the son of God, that temptation, my friends, was very real. You know what? It doesn't take much for us, sadly, to fall into the devil's trap in getting what we want when we want it. We live in a world of instant gratification now to do whatever it takes to get what we want or what we think we deserve. And we want to do what we want to do even if it goes against God's word itself. One of those challenges today for Christians is marriage. What is marriage according to the Lord? It's between one man and one woman. When is sex to happen between people? It's in marriage. And yet the world says, ah, you got to try it out first. You got to got to see if it's going to work first. What do you what do you mean listen to the Lord? That's what Satan would have us think. Everyone else is doing it anyway. The world is thinking it's all fine. But God doesn't fit what God says doesn't fit our culture anymore. And it makes us feel comfortable because that's what we want to do. Or maybe take matters in our own hands in regards to how we deal with others who have sinned against us. Did God really say, Satan says, forgive and love? No, this is time for payback, to get your righteous indignation out of there. God's word is not for strong-willed people like you, so get even. Show that you're tough. Or how we use our words. The gossip that's spread often about things, even if things are true, if it's meant to tear down somebody else, well, the devil says, why not? There's truth there. It's got to be told. Somebody's going to hear about it anyway, so it might as well be you. Ah, yes, the temptations to our, for us are very, very real, and sadly, we fail. But the temptation for our Lord to use his own power was very real, too. And our notice what Jesus does. He puts himself into the hands of his heavenly Father, he doesn't depend on himself. He depends on his Father. It says, Jesus says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. In other words, Jesus says, real life does not consist on earthly possessions and glory. That's not going to give the fulfillment. Jesus shows that he must go the way of the cross, and that means that he has to submit fully into the hands of the will of his heavenly Father. He uses the word of God to fight off Satan and all of his temptations to sin, using that weapon to defeat Satan every time. And my friends, that's the weapon that you and I always have at our disposal to fight off temptation to sin. No doubt, my friends, we're going to have this battle on our hands each and every single day. We cannot fall spiritually asleep. We must be awake. The theme of a constant struggle with our own flesh is very real. And by ourselves, we cannot win. But Jesus fought the struggle. He knows what's, what it's like. He knows exactly what we're dealing with. And he gives us his word. He gives us his very self to strengthen our faith, to walk in his way, knowing that it's sufficient for all time. The second word that man hears concerns how one uses God's word. Through the world, devil says this, misuse God's word, misuse it. And again, the temptation is tried with Jesus. In verses 5 and 6, it says, Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it's written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. This is a temptation that misinterpreted or misused what God's word actually says. Sure, Jesus, if you are actually the son of God, you can do this. Throw yourself down off the top of the temple and God will take care of you. Scripture says so. Trust your father to save you. And besides, again, can you imagine the people that will see that miraculous event? They will 
follow you every, all, everywhere you go. And you won't have to go the way of the cross. But isn't it interesting that that's not what God meant to do? It's like me saying something like, I'm going to go today and jump off the Lake Butamore Bridge and know I'm going to be saved because God's going to save me. He's not going to let me die. Uh, that's foolish. That's putting the Lord to the test. Now, we may not do such brash things but because we know better. But, my friends, there are times when we would like Scripture, perhaps to prove a point, we take it out of context, and we say something like, well, thus says the Lord. And to make it our own little thing, we take it out of context and misuse it to fit what we want it to say to endorse something that God really didn't say. An example is, Jesus says, don't worry about your life. Okay, great. That means I can do whatever I want with my possessions, my money. I'm going to go out and spend foolishly. I'm going to live wild and free. And God, besides, wants me to enjoy this life. He says so in the Bible. Again, that's a half-truth. We misuse God's word in order to fulfill some enjoyment that fits our needs first or my needs first. We are not honoring God then. We're not honoring him first and foremost, but rather ourselves, which again is idolatry. But Jesus does the opposite of our, as our perfect substitute. He tells Satan quite bluntly from Scripture itself that you shall not tempt the Lord your God. He again leaves all things in his Father's hands. Just as he knows his Father will provide for him in due time, so also he knows that his Father will take care of him. He will go to the cross. And that's a wonderful reminder for you and for me because the Lord will be with us always, as he has promised, even when times are not so good. I know you've had times like that in life where it might have been pretty hard. I know as a congregation you've gone through your challenges too. It was pretty hard. But guess what? The Lord brought you through it. And here you are today, thanks be to God. We look at the world around us. We look at what's all going on, all the craziness, and we get pretty upset. We get pretty afraid, and we get wondering about things, and we know it's very tense right now. But we don't despair, right, because we know something is coming far, far better. We know how fast things can disappear in an instant, how life is precious, but in all of it, our Lord will not leave us. He will not leave us without in our time of need. And we are assured of his salvation because Jesus never fell prey to the devil's schemes. And that really then leads to our third truth we learn. And that is the word that man hears concerns how we live out God's word. Through the world, Satan would have us say, disobey God's word. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. In one huge swoop of a temptation, Satan offers, immediate, Satan offers Jesus immediate fame, worldly popularity, riches, power, everything at his fingertips if he just simply fell down and worshipped him. Again, a very real temptation. It came in its crassest form in order to have Jesus avoid the way of the cross. It would be the simplest and easiest route to glory. But again, remember what Satan's doing. It's a half-truth, and he wants it for Jesus' destruction. But this temptation is not, old, is not new. It's very, very common. It's been around for centuries, but never more as dangerous, I would submit, as today. If we do what Satan says in getting what we want when we want it, we think we're going to receive all that goes with that. Look at all the celebrities or the sports stars of today. Many of them seem to have it all going for them. They have everything they want. All the money, all the glory, all the earthly glory, the praise. And yet they're living lives that are far apart from the Lord. But it's a message that Satan says, see, you can have all of this too. You can have it all now if you simply follow me in your own sinful desires. 
My friends, that's a big, big deception because it leads to certain death. Jesus, in his perfect obedience, didn't fall prey to this third most crass form of temptation. Instead, Jesus submitted to God's word. He says, Be gone, Satan, for it's written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. You see, my friends, as our perfect substitute, Jesus did what Adam failed to do in the Garden of Eden. Jesus perfectly did what you and I fail to do on a daily basis. And it's the reason why we can come to our Lord in repentant faith and receive his blessed word of forgiveness. Through his obedience and his willingness to go to the cross, to suffer and to die, we are declared not guilty before our Heavenly Father. When we come to the Lord's table to receive our perfect substitute, Jesus, he speaks a better word of forgiveness and strength of our faith to fight the devil's wily schemes, a better word than what Satan has to offer. Because in this gift of forgiveness comes also life and salvation when we will enter glory with our Lord, all by his mercy and grace. Yes, the theme of the season is set for us this morning. And that theme is simply this. Jesus didn't take the easy road, did he? He took that road that would lead to certain death to the, on the cross. If he would have taken the easy road, that road would have led to our eternal damnation. But thanks be to God, he went the hard way, the way of the cross, and that he underwent temptation for us. Because allowing himself to be tempted in every way with, as we are without sin means that our salvation is perfect. So we take his word to heart. We listen to Jesus. We listen to him, knowing that he's accomplished it all for us. May we so do that, now and always, for his sake. Amen. And now may God's peace, which surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and our minds through faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand and we sing the offertory, Create in Me. as we honor our Lord with our tithes and offerings.
We give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. In our prayers this morning, a number of uh, prayer requests today, of course, we keep in prayer those who are dealing with uh, physical ailments, uh, including Grace Vowles and Gloria Domsky, uh, Mary Jane Kettlewell. Mary Jane is recovering at Amarillo Care Center uh, and doing well there, and hopefully won't be there way long for her rehab. Uh, Jason Kralovitz, now home from the hospital, but uh, needing our prayers, of course. And Carlene Klein, who's having surgery this week, I believe knee surgery March 1st. We also have a couple of prayers of uh, thanksgiving and praise. Uh, first for Harvey Bessert. He is the father of our uh, member, uh, Grace member J Jim Bessert. Um, he is turning 100 years old tomorrow, so we give praise, in God, praise to God for the length of days he's granted to uh, Harvey, and uh, thank him for that. And also, uh, along with Joan and Ken Stoon, at the occasion of their 63rd wedding anniversary, uh, that is tomorrow as well. So we praise God for uh, those years of uh, marriage for uh, Joan and Ken. So with that, we will all go to our Lord in prayer. Please stand. As we begin our observance of Lent, Lord, we pray, lead us not into temptation. Assure us that you are with us in every place and defend us from the assaults of the evil one. Help us to treasure the cross in our hearts as it reveals your loving purpose and enable us to show our thankfulness for our full salvation in lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy, support and ever defend your church purchased with the precious blood of Christ. Strengthen your faithful people through the word that is able to make us wise unto salvation. Grant us every blessing through the holy sacraments, making us perfect in love and in all good works, especially to those of the household of faith. Lord, in your mercy, grant your wisdom and heavenly grace to all pastors and to those who hold office or discharge responsibility in your church, that by their devoted service, faith may be nurtured and your kingdom increase. We pray for officers of congregations and all those who serve in groups and on committees and individually where the tasks completed are often visible only to you. Lord, in your mercy, into a world that is dark and often hostile, send the light of your truth. Raise up faithful and courageous servants of Christ to advance the gospel both at home in urban, suburban, and rural settings and also in distant lands around the globe. Lord, in your mercy, Preserve our nation in justice and honor that we may lead safe and peaceable lives. Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land, especially the President and Congress, the Governor and Legislature of this state, and to all those who make and minister and judge our laws. Help them to serve the people in their areas of responsibility according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy, bestow your blessings on the schools of the church and upon all seminaries, colleges, universities, and centers of research, and those who teach and work in them. Sanctify our homes with your presence and bless them with joy. Maintain our children in the covenant of their baptism and enable their parents and other, or other family, member, care, family caregivers to bring them up in lives of faith and devotion. Unite the members of all families in a spirit of affection and service that they may show your praise in our land and in all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Bless us in each season, Lord. Let your blessing remain upon sea time and harvest, commerce and industry, leisure and rest, and the arts and culture of our people. Take under your special protection those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and be with all who put their hands to any useful task. Give them the just rewards for their labor and the knowledge that their work is a blessing in your sight. Lord, in your mercy, by your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity, including Grace, Gloria, Mary Jane, Jason, and Carlene, and all others, Lord, that we name before you. Bring consolation to those in sorrow and grant to all with special needs a full measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Enable us to be instruments of care according to your will, Lord, in your mercy. We remember with affection and gratitude those who have loved and served you in your church on earth, who now rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. 
We praise you, O Lord, for the blessings of life you grant to your people, including, Lord, 100 years of life you grant to your servant Harvey. Continue to bless him, Lord, with every good and perfect gift, and may his faith and trust in you uh, continue to be strengthened each and every single day that you will allow him to live on this earth. Thank you, Lord, for this great blessing. And Lord, also thank you for 63 years of wedded life you've granted to Joan and Ken. We praise you, Lord, for these years, and we pray that you continue to bless them with your good gifts. May they continue to focus on you as the center of their marriage together as they go through every joy and sorrow in this earthly life, but knowing you are with them always to the very end. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all these blessings. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Christ, our defender, protect us from all those whose plans would subvert your truth through heresy and schism, that as you are acknowledged in heaven and on earth as one and the same Lord, so your people gathered from all nations may serve you in unity of faith. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated for our closing hymn, number 561, The Tree of Life.